Greetings, eco nerdlings. In this podcast, we're going to be examining population pyramids. So first of all, terms that you need to know when we're talking about all of the population pyramids in accordance to populations. So demographic transition, this is when countries become economically developed, their birth and their death rates tend to decline. The pre-industrial stage is when little population growth, growth occurs due to high infant mortality rates. And then the transitional stage is when industrialization begins and death rates drop as well while birth rates remain the same. So death rates drop because of medical care, uh, cleaner water, cleaner food, better access again to medicine such as antibiotics and things like that that help to prevent deaths. And then we also have the industrial stage. This is when the birth rate drops and approaches the death rate. So what are population pyramids? Well, when studying the demographics of a single country, two of the most important factors to examine are the gender, meaning are you male or female, and the age distribution. How many males are between the ages of you know, zero and four? How many females are between the ages of 70 and 75? So that's what we're talking about, gender and age distribution. And these variables are graphed as population pyramids and they can provide valuable insight into a country. So this is what a population pyramid looks like. This is what we would call a bottom up pyramid, meaning the bottom or the base is going to have a lot more of the population than the top will. So looking at this pyramid right here, you're going to see that the majority of the population is going to be at the bottom. So we have a huge population being between the ages of zero to four years of age. But unfortunately, not many of those individuals who were born from that zero to four years of age make it up into their 60s or their 70s or their 80s. So a lot of them are dying before they get into their elder ages. Uh, and then looking at this one, the males and the females are roughly the same. Uh, females versus males in some of the populations might be a little different, but typically in most populations, it's about a 50-50 split. Uh, sometimes females will live a little bit longer than males. So demographic transition, the fertility rate and the population growth patterns in a given country will not remain constant, meaning they're, they're always going to be fluctuating, and they change based on a wide variety of factors. So looking at the United States fertility rate, like I said, again, they're going to fluctuate. They're never going to be this perfect little line. There's going to be reasons why the population increases or why it decreases. So here we had about mm, a little over three, so maybe 3.25 average of uh, children per woman. And then the Great Depression hits and the fertility rate will drastically drop. Then we start increasing again, uh, baby boomers come along and then the 1970s energy crisis hits. And again, we have a dip in the fertility rate. Stays yeah, kind of steady, a little up, a little down. And then the Great Recession hits and we're gonna see a little bit more of a dip as well. And that'll continue uh, even today. So in population growth, we have opposing factors as well as factors that encourage it. So a pro-naturalist pressure, pro, you know, kind of for it, meaning yes, we should have, you know, lots of kids and the more the merrier, better, 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 better. So pro-naturalist pressures, it increases the likeliness of individuals within a population to have more children and they give different reasons. So one of the reasons is it's a source of pleasure to have a child. It is a privilege to have a, ch a child or children. Uh, you're very prideful when you have a child and it helps make you more comfortable because you know you're going to have someone to take care of you when you get older. So a lot of the reasons for that is people want someone that they know loves them to take care of them when they get older. So they'll have lots of children so those children can then take care of them when they get older. Um, aid in supporting family income. So again, the more the merrier. The more children we have, the more they can contribute. So back in the day when there was a lot of you know, farming and that type of thing that went on, the more children you had, the more hands you had on the farm helping out with different things. Uh, also, again, even, even nowadays, a lot of families will have you know, large amounts of children and those children will have to go get jobs at an early age to help contribute to that family income. And this counteracts the high child mortality rates. Uh, social status, again, it's important to have children in a lot of areas, and it's especially important to have a son. 
because that son passes on their family name to the next generation. And then there's also the anti-naturalist pressure. And a lot of these involve women. So basically, um, higher education for women, more personal freedom for women. And this leads to women not wanting to have as many kids because the more kids a woman have, uh, the more she has to you know, give to the child, give to the family, stay at home, take care of the kids. And I'm not saying that everybody has to do that, but as far as the anti-naturalist uh, pressure, a lot of it, like I said, does involve women who don't want to be at home all of the time taking care of the children and the babies and having, you know, five or six children or even more than that. Uh, they're focused on having more opportunities to earn a salary. They want higher economic, uh, socioeconomic statuses within society. So countries will typically pass through a series of stages as they industrialize and transition from a developing country to a developed country. During the pre-industrial stage, there's going to be a lot of food shortages, malnutrition, poor sanitation, so they're not going to have clean water, they're not going to have food, they're not going to have access to medical care, antibiotics, that type of thing uh, that will contribute to a high infant mortality rate. And at one point in time, even in the United States, all regions of the world were in this stage, and all of us were in this stage up until the Industrial Revolution hit. Some countries are still in this stage. So looking at Ethiopia, during the early transition stage, access to food and medicine always improves and it leads to a rapid drop in death rates. So here we still have a bottom up, so you're seeing a lot of birth happening, but again, you're still seeing a drastic decrease in how many of those births result in somebody that actually lives into their 60s or their 70s. Uh, birth rates remain high as the family size is actually tied to the cultural norms as well as religious beliefs. So, you know, again, cultural norms. You have as many kids as you possibly can because you don't know how many of those children are going to survive, as well as a lot of religious beliefs that are against birth control measures. And the population size, again, begins to increase exponentially. So during the late transition stage, efforts are made to reduce the birth rate. So we want to stop having so many children contributing to the population. We now want to have fewer children because we're going to be able to provide those fewer children with better opportunities. Birth control and sex education start to gain a greater acceptance. It's not just the cultural norm to have, you know, six or seven or eight children. Now it's the cultural norm to we want to have fewer children because we want those fewer children to have more opportunities and we know that having a lot of children is going to cost us a lot more money than if we have a few children and we put a lot more time and effort into those fewer children. So Bangladesh would be an example of that so you see that their birth rate has actually dropped off and there are larger amounts of uh, individuals between the ages of 5 to 9 and 10 to 14 than there are being born in the ages of 0 to 4. And women play a much greater role in family planning whenever they're in a late transitional stage because the women can actually say no. They have the right to say, I don't want to have another child. Let's use protection. Whereas when they're still developing and, you know, potentially women's rights are, you know, very low or non-existent, they don't really have an opinion of whether or not they want to have a child. That's just whatever her husband wants is whatever he gets. She doesn't have an opinion in that. But in the late transitional stages, again, women's rights start coming into play, uh, more equal opportunities and that type of thing. And then the population continues to increase, but it starts to increase at a much slower rate. So during the industrial stage, the birth rates have fallen back into balance with the death rates. So you're going to see, you know, kind of more of a bulge in the middle at this point. Uh, the total fertility rate is close to the replacement level. So we're going to start leveling off the population and the population eventually starts to stabilize and you see the number of births kind of you know being a little bit less than what we have in the middle ages uh, people are living well into their 60s and their 70s so that is starting to stabilize and then germany is an example of a post-industrial stage country the birth rates continue to fall due to anti-naturalist pressures and remember we talked about that that's, you know, when women are wanting to go out into society more and take on, you know, more dominant roles in their careers and that type of thing. 
and then the total fertility rate is below the replacement level as well, so the population will actually start to decrease. 37 countries have reached this post-industrial stage around the world. Most of them are in Western Europe. But to most population experts, the challenge is to help the remaining 88% of the world get to this stage and stop overpopulating the Earth. So this is our population pyramid for the United States. We have a pretty, you know, level as far as how many people are being born and how many are surviving. So we have this, you know, good curve right here. People are living well into their 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, 90s. We do have a little bit of difference between the males versus the females because males uh, don't typically live quite as long as females. And then we also have that bulge. So if you look right here, we have this bulge between people in their uh, early to late 50s. And that's because of the baby boom that the United States has that bulge in the area. And that was when people were coming back from the war. And as soon as they got back from the war, they had all this money saved up because they were overseas. And what did they want to do? They wanted to go home to their wifeys and make babies. And they did. And there were also, like I said, more women than men in the older age group. And that's just because of differences in longevity between males versus females. And the United States has a high percent of retired people because of the long life expectancy that we have in our country now. And this has made the United States realize how important it is to have some type of social security. So if you have grandparents, you might hear about them getting their social security check, which is a check, you know, based on their income and all of that throughout their lives in the United States. And it helps them to pay for their rent, for different types of, you know, medical care. And we also have programs now, you know, for older people as far as medicine and that type of thing goes to help take care of them once they're no longer in the workforce. And the United States is considered, is considered a very slow growth population. So this graph is basically going to show you the generalized model of demographic transition. So looking here, we have the stage one, which is the pre-industrial. Stage two is transitional. Stage three is the industrial, when everything's being produced, medical care, all of that. And then the post-industrial. So this right here is going to be the total population. So pre-industrial, the population is going to be pretty low because of the high death rate, the high infant mortality rate, that not many of those babies are surviving into the reproductive ages. When we go into the transitional state, it's still low in the beginning, but as we start transitioning, you're going to see some uh, exponential growth occurring. Uh, exponential growth is going to continue into the industrial stage. Eventually, this is the stage where it's going to start to level off. And then post-industrial, you're actually going to start to see decreases in the population as it levels off and people stop having as many children. Uh, you're going to see the same thing with birth rate, it kind of stays the same. Um, and then once we get to the industrial and post-industrial, you're going to see the birth rate drop off. And then death rate right here, you're going to see a very high death rate in the pre-industrial stage, uh, continuing into transitional, and then the death rate starts to drop as we get further into the transitional stage. And then the death rate will stay the same throughout the industrial and the post-industrial because of all of those advances in medical care and access to clean water and enough food and that type of thing. So the future of human populations, uh, most demographers believe that the world population will eventually stabilize sometime during the next century. Projections of the maximum population size, we never know. Um, 8 billion, which is extremely low because, you know, we're almost there. And then medium would be about 9.3 billion. High, they're estimating about 13 billion. And remember, we talked about, you know, the speculations being that by the year 2050, we might actually have a world population of 12 billion. So who knows? We might actually exceed that 13 billion uh, human population on Earth speculation. Well, that's all for this podcast. If you want to review this video or view any other AP Environmental Science as well as AP Biology videos, you can go to www.nerdlingscience.com. This is the Queen Nerdling signing off. Stay nerdy till next time.